really going to do is about creating a marketing strategy. And the way we're going to do that, we're first going to talk a little bit of overview of marketing strategy, just to give us a context. You can remember things better if you have a framework to place the information in. And so we want to give you that framework. Why is marketing strategy important? How does it impact your financial performance? What research supports that? And we want to give you a little flavor of that first, very quick. Then almost the whole session will be spread, uh, will be spread across these four first principles of marketing strategy. And you say, wow, I haven't necessarily heard of the first principles of marketing strategy. What is that? This is an organizing framework. Actually, the, there's a book in the works right now with McGraw-Hill um, that myself and a colleague from Texas A&M are working on. What we do is we take kind of all the stuff done in marketing strategy and we group it into four buckets. And these four buckets are all things out there to solve what I would say are the four basic problems in marketing. If these problems didn't exist, marketing would be easy. It would just be, a, you feed it into, it'd be some add-on Microsoft would have already integrated into Office. And you just plug it in there, it would be done. We have to deal, all customers are different. We have to deal with that customers change over time. We have to deal with competitors react. And we have to deal with all resources are fixed. And there's four sets of tools and processes to deal with those four problems. And we're going to go through that. And at the end, we'll just kind of close up with an overview of next steps for the people that are interested. Now, as far as how I'm going to go through this today and kind of the format, I teach um, only really two classes at University of Washington. I teach the advanced marketing strategy class to the executive MBA. And I can pick, John was there. Where's Derek? He's already, oh, I didn't know if you're still at the bar back there. Sorry, you, you didn't make it back. Good. Yeah. And there's, I, I noticed a couple other people that um, had taken this class once and, um, and are, are back here today. We took 10 weeks to cover this. Today we're going to do it in three hours. Part of the way we're going to do that is I'm from New York and I can talk very fast. That'll take up for maybe half the time. The other thing is we've cut out all the testing and all the grading. And I hate to say we're going to have to cut out a little bit of the discussion. I absolutely want to open questions up at times come up. But if you have a really narrow question that goes to your firm, I'll maybe just take that offline. I'll stay here almost as late as people want after it's over to, um, to talk about stuff later or offline. I'm very, I open to anybody who's ever taken a class with me. Email me. We can set up a time to talk and do it offline. Um, but because we're kind of tight for time, I'm going to keep things moving fairly quickly. So with that, we'll start with the marketing strategy overview. So first, what is the difference between marketing strategy, what we're going to talk about here today, and another class down the, down the hall maybe called kind of corporate strategy or business strategy or and I want to talk about this circle down here is the marketing strategy. You notice how I made it pretty big. I'm a marketing guy. This other stuff isn't quite as important to me. So what do we, what do, we do in market strategy? These are the questions we answer. The first question, who to sell to? Who's your target customer? What to sell? These are the questions we're going to go through and ideally give you the frameworks and all to talk about today. What to sell, the product, the service, how to make customers want it. A big part of the business is you might have a great product, but there just might not be demand for it. There's a lot of things you can do to grow demand. Um, new attributes that might not be important today, but with the right marketing effort, you can make it important. Even if it isn't really important, you can kind of, I don't want to say we you know, persuade people in some cases not in their best interest, but um, that sometimes happens. How to find and keep customers, loyalty. How do you do acquisition? How do you do retention? How to build a relative advantage. This is the moat around your business. So when the competitors, if you do something good in business and you make a lot of money, what's going to happen? People are going to copy you. They're going to say, that's a good business. I can do it cheaper. I can do it faster. I can carve out some little piece of your customers and go after them. So you need a, a relative advantage. You need something and you need to be able to make it sustainable, something that can last over time. If you went right now to knock off Coca-Cola, you had a business plan and you say, okay, I'm going to give you $20 million. I want you to build a competitor to Coca-Cola. Do you think you could build a soft drink in a blind taste test that would win? Yes, it was the new Coke, actually. Um, this, they're not winning on their best tracing soft drink. They could beat that. They're winning on the brand, right? How hard would it be to go build a brand equal to Coke? It's been valued at $70, $80 billion, I bet. It's actually, it would cost more to replicate it because it comes over time. If you want to do it in a short time, it costs you more money. So this is kind of what marketing is going to focus on, what we're going to focus on today. There's other things out there we're not going to talk about. We don't care about taxes. That's somebody else's problem. Cash flow. We assume <laughs> there's enough money coming to the marketing department to do what we want to do. If you're at a company that's broke, I'd say you're probably not going to be able to do great marketing. 
Not that you can't do some guerrilla marketing and do cheap marketing, yeah, but it does take money. And some of it is just like building a factory. It takes money in order to, re to get the benefits later. If you don't want to put investments in brand, it won't pay off later. It takes money to go do that. Culture. Culture matters. Starbucks. Have you ever been to a Starbucks at an um, airport that wasn't run by Starbucks? With <laughs> Starbucks? With Starbucks, with um, airport employees running the Starbucks, have you ever noticed a difference? It's run with a little different culture. So culture does matter, especially if you're in a service business, and they've done very well. They give a retirement, they give health, they give a lot of benefits, I'm not picking on Starbucks, but that you don't maybe need to pour coffee. That other companies might say, I can go do this at minimum wage and just turn people over. Would it be the same experience? No. So culture does matter to marketing, but we don't own it. Usually that's owned at the firm level. SEC filings, another thing we don't care about. Scope, vision, purpose, mission. I spend a lot of time in management about this. Where are we going? I would argue you cannot really do this right if you don't understand this stuff. But sometimes this is done at a very high level. We want to go help people using new pharmaceutical products, if that's your mission or vision or something. Well, OK, then marketing would look at how to execute that. Normally, those boundaries are given to marketing. We don't get to readjust them. So this is, this is us. This is what we're going to focus on today. I always like to do that because sometimes there's terminology. People just say, oh, corporate marketing. It's, it's somewhat different at times. And there are, you look at groups, HR, R&D, operations. I put them on the line because what they do matter. Matters to marketing and it matters to things that maybe aren't directly applicable to marketing. The kind of people you hire, if you're building a sales force, um, Jack runs a sales program at UW. And, you know, he deals a lot with the HR recruiters because they're trying to hire salespeople to go out and work at their firms. And, you know, that, that HR hiring the right people is very, very critical. And they spend a lot of time in sales to get people because you train them for six months to a year before they ever, you know, they're at a loss. They're not making money for you. And then if they change jobs at 18 months, it was a net loss. So they really have to spend a lot of time on that. And obviously, R&D and operations fit into the price and the product attributes and such. So that's corporate versus um, marketing. Um, strategy. Next, we want to look at does it matter? Now, I assume the group here have signed up, giving up a Thursday evening for 6 to 9 o'clock. You probably care about marketing to a certain extent. So it's not the general pop population. But if you get a bunch of accountants and finance people, sometimes they're not always as fired up about spending money on marketing. So there is a lot of data. I'm going to go through two studies really quick just to give you, it has been shown empirically that Spending marketing, not that you can't waste money, you can waste money in marketing, but overall, marketing in general improves stock price and reduces cash flow needs. Capabilities in marketing pay a higher dividend than capabilities in R&D and operations. They did a survey not long ago, it's not here, where they surveyed some CEOs and said, what would you rather have? Your brand and your image and that, or would you rather have your factories? They said, I can replace the factories in a day. You know, I can go outsource it. Find companies to outsource. I can't build a brand in a day. So if you look at it, wow, the, the brand is becoming very big, less vulnerable to being copied. Brands, innovation, relationships all drive financial performance. will show how these play a role in marketing. And it's especially key for startups. You see a lot in the high tech business, they lose money all the way up to the IPO. And all they're out is trying to get customers, trying to acquire customers, be it web-based customers or whatever. Because ultimately they say, I can monetize the customers later. Yeah, I mean, you've seen that, especially in the, in the online environment. Another one they did that was interesting is they did a survey of non-marketers. And this is on the data and analysis. We're going to go through some analyses today, kind of math, if you will. But we'll, we'll keep the, the math light, but we'll talk about it a little. And they're finding firms that are doing real well, the high performers, are three times more likely to use big data. Um, one of my past PhD students now runs the CRM data analytics groups for Wells Fargo. It is amazing what companies are doing. You know what company, what industry is using data the most right now? I mean, Google probably is the biggest in all just because they're huge. But casinos, it is phenomenal what they're doing with targeting and, and really marketing. Phenomenal. Other people are just hiring. Nike just hired a person out of the casino industry. Probably not promoting that because it probably doesn't sound right. But um, because they're so good at doing some of this. And there's a lot real shortage of people that can apply the tools. So a lot of what we're going to go through today is tools, processes and tools. You're not going to be able to learn every tool because it takes a long, you know, some of them we do 10-week classes on one of the tools we're going to talk about today. Well, we're not going to do that in three hours. But I want you to understand what the tool does for you. So you can say, I could go hire somebody to do that. 
or I know that can be done, maybe I'll learn it myself and spend more time on it. So why is marketing strategy key? So the previous slide kind of said there's data or there's research supporting that marketing matters. Here's where does it play a role? Where does it play a role? And I think I didn't mention this, but I think everybody knows all the slides are in the slide deck here as you can follow along, right? As um, I, I noticed a couple people had it shut, but that's fine. Is where does marketing play a role? And the way I'm going to look at this, I'm going to look at two financial outcomes, sales and profits. Nobody would argue me sales and profits are not key, right? And we're going to use a chain ratio. And what I mean by that, I'm going to take sales, I'm going to break it up into its constituent parts where you just would multiply all those together, or in some cases subtract them, same for profits. And I'm going to say, let's think about where marketing plays a role in this. First, market demand. Marketing plays a big role in growing market size with new products and services or just lowering price. How much did the new iPhone that Apple launched, a long time ago now, how much did that grow the smartphone business? Huge. Now, 5, 10x. It grew the market for it. It, it made the demand bigger. Um, obviously, you can lower prices as price points go down. Things that maybe were out of your you know, wanting to spend or even ability to spend, maybe now it gets cheaper and you can say, hey, I can go buy that. So that drives demand, the size of the market. The next thing we care about is market share. Marketing can grow share, better products and services. So if you know what your customers want better, you can launch a product before they even know they want it, or at least before your competitors. You can have higher loyalty to retain, or you can acquire more customers. All those things can give you more share. Marketing plays a big role. Next is pricing. We did one study in the B2B environment. We found um, that they, and this was with industrial salespeople, they would pay on average, a purchasing agent said they would pay on average 4.6, call it 5% extra, to buy the product from their salesperson. So if I was dealing with you, you left and went to my competitor, they say, if I, had, if I could follow him, if he had the same products as the competitor, I would follow him and pay 5% extra. That was the average. In some cases, it would be 30 or 40% extra. Now people say, not in my industry. We've done a lot of studies on this. A lot of times you go ask a buyer, what's a buyer's job, an industrial purchasing agent, is to squeeze every dime out of the business. That's their job. So they're not going to tell you right off the base, oh yeah, I'll give extra money. But when we actually empirically test it, we find they do it. They do do it. Um, sometimes they're not even completely cognizant of it. And we'll get in maybe into that a little bit, a little bit later. So it also allows you to have lower marketing expense. eBay, 10 years, hundreds and hundreds, millions of customers actually, without doing $1 of advertising. Not $1 of advertising. Starbucks doesn't advertise much. You don't see... Super Bowl ads with Starbucks. How do they get their customers? How did eBay? It was all word of mouth, all referrals. So if you have good, you can really have a lot lower sales and marketing expenses. So it can reduce costs. It reduces cost lots of ways. If you're not losing as many customers, it reduces cost. So when you want to say, and somebody says to you, as you know, a CFO says, I want to know the ROI, the third question of all the business people we surveyed, um, what do you want us to solve? As a, they said, I want to know the ROI of my marketing expenditure. I'm like, yeah, so would I. Um, it's hard. We can do it. Online is the best because you can kind of track things really nice. But when you really get out there and you're doing branding, you're doing direct mail, you're doing word of mouth, there might be somebody here that goes back and talks to somebody at a, on the sideline of a soccer game of your child or something about you ought to get an MBA. And they might come in here. How am I going to compare this event today and link that to that person buying a service from UW. I can't connect that, and that's why it's very, very hard. When you look at all the ways marketing impacts sales, revenue, and profit, it's very hard to tease all those apart. They're operating on different times through different people. Very, very difficult. Um, usually, if you can get to the point of showing break-even, it's a huge win because there's all sorts of other mechanisms going on that's helping you. If you can isolate it down, that it's working. So. That was just kind of big picture. You know, that's normally we just did three hours of lecture. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> so what we said, marketing, hope you believe me, it's important. We can document it impacts financial impact. It impacts it in a lot of different ways. So now we're going to go through the tools. And each four, all four of these, I'm going to go through in a similar fashion. So kind of you see, OK, we talked about one, we talked about two. And at the end, I'm going to weave them together because they do have a natural sequence on the way you'd want to go do it. If you're developing a marketing strategy, typically you address them in this sequence. 
why don't we address them all at once in one big simultaneous equation? The problem is it's just too darn complicated. It's just too complicated. There's too many moving parts, and you'll see that as we go through. So we break it into pieces, pieces that a manager can get their arms around, and we can do analyses to answer it, at least give us good insights into the empirical solution, and then we move on to the next part. 